Mobility Scooters Direct here today to show you the Pride Mobility Revo 2.0 four-wheel mobility scooter. This was a uh, product that was released in 2019. It's a full-size mobility scooter. It's capable of holding up to 375 pounds, goes up to five miles per hour, and on a full charge and handle, it goes about uh, just under 18 miles, 17.4 miles. So. Uh, it can take you pretty much all day, all weekend, if, if you use it moderately. It's got an eco mode button here and a race mode, um, which it's just going to travel a little bit more efficiently. It's going to go longer and, and your battery is going to last a little bit longer if you go on eco mode. Uh, to the left of that switch, you've got a light switch here, which if you turn it on, you can see here, let me move the scooter forward a little bit. Nice little headlight, and it also has uh, rear lights as well, which I'll show you. So when I'm moving the scooter forward or backwards here, you can see the rear lights, which is a pretty nice feature, um, especially if you are the type of person that likes to go out at nighttime. So a couple of other things we'll go over. I'll zoom in here up close to show you the dash and the features and how that works. All right, so on the dash of this scooter, we have a very familiar battery indicator, which tells you how full the battery charge is. It goes all the way up to five greens when it's fully charged. You've got three yellows and two reds. As a general rule of thumb, you want to try not to let it get to the red and start charging when it's in the yellow. Um, if you do get it into the red quite often, it will... Um, affect the battery's uh, life and the longevity of the battery. So we recommend always bringing it in when it's in the yellow to get the best uh, lifetime out of your battery. Uh, right underneath the battery meter, we have our speed control knob. Uh, if you go all the way counterclockwise towards the turtle, it goes really slow. All the way towards the turtle, uh, the rabbit rather, it's gonna go a full five miles per hour. Down here, you've got your, uh, your battery, I'm sorry, your light switch to use the lights. And on the left, we have a eco mode, which kind of makes it go a little bit slower, has the better battery uh, life when you do that on a full charge. It'll probably go a little bit longer with the eco mode versus the regular street or sport mode that allows it to go the full five miles per hour. On the left, you can see the indicators here. If you go back, it's going to reverse. If you go forward, it goes forward. That's with the left control. Now these uh, handlebars, or what's called a tiller, are made for ambidextrous use. The right hand side has a controller that works in the opposite manner. So if you go back on the right, it goes forward. If you go forward, it goes in reverse. Again, it allows you to choose if you want to use the left or the right hand. It's very convenient. Here we have the horn, very high pitch sound, and then the very convenient USB charging port for those that want to charge their phone on the go. Now down here we do have the key slot or the ignition under the handlebar on the left side is the charging port as you can see. And one other thing that we have here at the bottom which I wanted to show you was the fuse uh, trip. So if for some reason it's not working, it's not turning on, it's not getting any power, you might want to try hitting that fuse switch just to see if that helps repower the unit and get it all working the way it should. So as far as the front tiller, it's a very common setup like most mobility scooters made by Pride Mobility aside from the USB charging port which is a really nice uh, extra feature that's uh, part of the Revo 2.0. I'm going to show you how to take it apart now. It works very similar to all of the Pride Mobility scooters that offer the uh, you know, disassembling feature, which is pretty straightforward. You start with the seat. So to disassemble this scooter, there's one thing you have to know, and a uh, few other models have the same under storage compartment here, which it's got two compartments that fold outwards. And they're a little finicky, but what you want to do is make sure that they're open prior to lifting the seat up. So once they're open, you can fold the seat down and pop it up. There's a little lever here, which is gonna allow you to rotate the seat, as well as a post 
which goes right into the seat post hole that's down there. The baskets have to be open, so that's how you put the seat on and off. Again, if you want to rotate the seat, you use the lever and it'll rotate and lock into place in several different positions. So you can even turn the seat all the way around, which I'm going to leave to demonstrate a couple of other features. So the armrests do flip up and down. Each one has adjustment knobs here in the back with the pin, which allows you to kind of uh, control the seat armrests and the width at which they're positioned. You've got two different positions here. So if you want to open it up a little bit, give yourself some more room, you can, or you can bring the armrests closer in. It's really your call. Once you've gotten in, you put the pin in, Tighten the adjustment knobs here, and you're good to go. So, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the disassembling process. Remember, these baskets need to be open to take the seat off. I like to fold the seat down, pop it off. I'll put this back here. Now, these batteries, which we demonstrated in the unboxing video, have to be removed and put back in in a certain uh, pattern here. You want to take the battery that's on the left side if you're riding it off first. And I'm, let me take out the key. So you take out the left one first because it has the connection at the top that needs to meet the right battery's connection at the bottom. So put that off to the side, take off the right battery afterwards. Move this forward a little bit so you can see. I'm going to hit the lever, which in the last video we explained will allow it to have the brake turned off so I can manually push it without batteries. Remember, the scooter will not operate if it's in freewheel mode, so I have to turn the brake back on in order for the scooter to work. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do, just like all of these scooters uh, by Pride Mobility that we carry, there's a tiller adjustment knob down here. It's a round knob, which we went over in the unboxing video. I'm going to spin it counterclockwise to bring this down. And you can remove the basket before or after this. It really doesn't matter. They're very easy to put on, as we have shown in several other videos. There's just two little brackets and uh, two little slots for the brackets. So I'll put that off to the side. And the last part, well, right before the last part, you want to lock the uh, tiller. So there's a knob here, which I may have to lock while it's up, I think. It's going to prevent you from spinning. There you go. So you lock that prior to lowering the uh, tiller, actually. And that's going to prevent it from swinging when it's in the trunk of your car. Last but not least, we grab the post. There's a clip here. Lift the clip, grab the post, and separate the front from the rear. Now you've got the scooter completely unassembled, and putting it back together is the breeze. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in so we can show you the indicators on the front and the rear part of the scooter as we bring it back together. Okay, so when putting the uh, scooter back together, the first step is to bring uh, the front part of the scooter to meet and connect with the rear part of the scooter. Now Pride does a really great, jo great job at manufacturing these products to make it extremely easy to put back together and take apart. We went over how to take it apart, and you'll notice there's these green lines which are meant to tell you, hey, this connects to that. This bottom part on the front of the scooter has a little U-shaped bracket that goes right over the corresponding bar with the green mark on it. So if we look from above, looking down, you'll be able to see the green markers kind of lining up on the left and the right side of the scooter, and it's going to very easily just rest right on top of that bar when I bring it over it, basically letting gravity do its thing. So gravity took over and it fell right into place. I just had to kind of push it together a little bit. I'm going to show you one more time how to take it apart. 
Grab this with one arm firmly, lift here, pull the front away from the back, and it's gonna come apart. Make sure it doesn't fall over, but if it does, just tilt it back again. Now again, you've got the, the rear with the green markers on the bar, and then the two brackets on each side, which are gonna rest right over the bar, and then I'm just gonna let it fall into place. Just like that. All right, now that we have figured out how to disassemble and reassemble the front part of the scooter with the rear, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting it back together. So, first I'm gonna unscrew, go counterclockwise with this uh, round knob here to bring the tiller back up and out of the way so that I can get my battery and my chair back on. Remember, it's locked right now, it won't turn. A lot of customers sometimes wonder why they can't turn it and they just simply forget that right here, there's a knob that you have to unlock by going counterclockwise. You lock it by going clockwise. You do need to push it in prior to turning it. It's a kind of a push and release mechanism for the knob there. So now it's able to turn. We'll put the basket back on, which again, you just line up the two slots here to the corresponding brackets. And let it slide down. It's in. Now we can start with the batteries, which again, you do have to put them in in a certain way. You can't just put the batteries in any certain way. The first one you'll want to do is the one on the right. And it's labeled on the scooter. It says battery number one. So we'll put that one in first. And then next you put the one on the left. So now that the batteries are in, we'll go ahead and put the seat on. Now remember, with these seats, there's a little bit of a trick to it. Make it very easy or be a little bit troublesome if you don't remember this trick. You want to keep the baskets open. The baskets are open, line up the post with the knob there, and it drops right in. Make sure you give it a little spin so that you know it's locked into place. And then the, the knob here will allow you to start turning it. The little lever adjustment, adjustment lever rather. You lift it up and it allows you to spin and then it locks into place once you're in the desired position. The baskets do close all the way and click once they're closed to unlock them. You lift up a little bit and then pull out. Here it click when it's pushed in all the way. That means it's locked in. So, we've learned how to disassemble it, went over the dash and how that works. The tiller adjustment feature is nice for those users that maybe want a little less space between the handlebar and their torso, or for someone that wants a little bit more room that has longer arms, you can lock it into any position, really. The USB feature is great for those that have their phone and want to charge while on the go. It does have a horn which I'll go ahead and demo it for you. Get the key back out of my pocket here. Remember, it's not gonna work, which I just wanna show you. If you have it in freewheel mode and you try to turn it on, you're gonna get a bunch of beeps. It's not gonna work. It won't go anywhere, it just keeps beeping at you if you try to go. To fix that and turn it off, remember it's in freewheel now, Lock it, make sure it's not moving, it's locked in, turn the scooter on, and it's working fine now. So, that's the Revo 2.0, a 2019 model by Pride Mobility. It comes highly recommended. We offer it not only with free shipping, but also tax-free, best prices guaranteed. If you have any questions about this product, feel free to call us or chat with us. You can also send us an email. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.